see of his glory and his goodness here tonight. We started this morning and how powerful it was to start off the day. Um, I was so blessed from the first service knowing that even here tonight, um, the incredible things that God has in store. Would you just love on somebody around you and just tell them just to get ready that this is your night? I'm telling you what, this is your night. You know, it's been such a blessing all day long, and I'm so glad that we're just getting started. I'm so glad uh, that this is as if it's just beginning here tonight. And, um, you know, in the early service, I didn't want them to stop. I wanted them just to go through uh, into the second service, and we go all day. And uh, Ed and Phil, it's such a blessing to see you guys. Love you so much. And... Uh, I'm telling you what, I am so excited. You know why pastors, Happen Sandy, myself, why we're so excited? It's because tonight it's like it's family. It, this is a, a family night. Um, this is a night where I see those that have been with us for years that have experienced and seen it. And I just know that tonight is a family blessing. I, I know that tonight that it's those that... We, we love you so much and so excited to see the breakthroughs that God's going to bring forth in your lives tonight. And um, we're just so thankful for that. And, and just as we shared of this morning, um, one thing that we shall never forget is the service of men and women and what they've done to serve our country. And tonight, would you just give those who have served our country uh, a wonderful if if you have just stand up if you served we want to say thank you if you've served our country we did it this morning but if you would stand thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Nicole. you know we had Jim share his testimony um, and how beautiful and incredible of a testimony that he carries that he lives out today and uh, we're going to have to have you share that again. Um, just incredible. And we thank you guys for the service to for us to be able to live in the greatest nation um, in the whole world. And uh, thank you so much. Um, so if uh, we don't normally, are there are there clipboards back there? You guys, would you just pass those? I know that uh, normally it's a Sunday morning, but we're trying to get in the habit of doing that Sunday night as well. And uh, it's just to help us take care of you better. If you're visiting with us, there's information you can fill out um, on the backs. And, um, you know, uh, this is, this is going to be just um, the ushers are ready for just the normal tithes just as quickly as possible. Tonight we're going to be able to sow in to the man of God's ministry. And uh, we'll have an opportunity for that. And I want you to be praying about the seed of giving. Um, he mentioned in the second service, God had laid upon his heart specifically in regards to um, the blessings of when you sow and when you give to a prophet. And that, that's actually a special blessing and a special promise and a special reward uh, of what happens to those that give to a prophet. It speaks about the prophet's reward. And... Um, we're going to have that opportunity as well. But this is just for the normal uh, tithes. I want you to save your offerings and your seeds that you're going to be giving um, and another offering here coming uh, later on in the service. And just grab that uh, tithe in your hand. Father, we thank you for the, the, the tithe here tonight, Lord. We thank you for your blessings upon it. We thank you for multiplication. We just thank you, Lord, as, as we give it unto you uh, with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ushers. Thank you. And with the worship being so good, that was hard. I tell you what, because uh, um, the praise and worship team, guys, thank you for spoiling us um, tonight. And it's such a blessing. But we were wanting to to do normal Sunday nights. There's many Sunday nights we go all through the night just in worship. Uh, you know, we've got such a, uh, a place of admiration and 
uh, heart to just to be able to worship God like that. But um, tonight on divine assignment, um, we're so blessed. Uh, as I said this morning, if you were here, it's my favorite time of year besides the pumpkin pie is when I get to spend time with uh, friends of ministry, specifically the the prophet Lloyd Bustard. And if, when I get the chance to just to be a part of the their ministry for the weekend and spending time and um, uh, sharing meals and just talking and and it's it's my favorite time of the year for sure. And my heart is so incredibly excited. Uh, would you welcome with me here tonight, knowing that on divine assignment, Prophet Lloyd Bustard comes as he comes. Would you just say uh, gateway welcome and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Thank you. And thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your kindness. Uh, my wife, Pam, and I have been married for 35 years. And uh, can you all hear me good? Okay. 35 years. And uh, I was seven and she was five. <laughs> no, I was, uh, I was 22 and she was 19. We come from different sides of the spectrum. Uh, I'm from Canada. She's from Mississippi. I'm from a family of 19 rednecks. Oh, my God. How we ever come out of that family alive is a miracle. Trust me when I say that. And I married this beautiful lady who was raised in an upper middle class family of four beautiful girls, you know, with beautiful parents and, and, uh, I had my pick, yes, yeah. No, I didn't. They were all taken except that little puppy right there. <laughs> God saved the best for last. I can promise you that. Uh, but I was sitting there thinking, because Pam and I have some great discussions. You know, um, it's, it's important to... Keep things in their pers proper perspective. You know, there's an old saying, don't get too heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Uh, Pam and I discussed earlier this morning just about life. And we've got, we've got three grown uh, kids now. They'll always be kids, right? And... Uh, uh, our oldest daughter and her husband, Rocky, live uh, in Rock Hill, South Carolina, just outside of Charlotte, and, and they're just doing great. They've given us three beautiful uh, little granddaughters, and, uh, and, and when, when, I, when I saw my son, I've got one son, Kyle, he's 32, when I actually saw that he got married, that's when the Lord reminded me there is one for everyone. <laughs> because, uh, you know, we've got a great son, but uh, uh, he, he's a super guy. I mean, he's 6'1", good looking and all that good stuff and smart as a whip. He's a senior software engineer in Austin, te Texas. And uh, just got an incredible brain, loves God, great musician, but he just got some, I don't know what he call it, I don't want to call it weird ways, huh? <laughs> peculiar? Yeah, he is. Is that what you said? He got some peculiar th ways and thought patterns and all that, and God gave him the perfect mate because she's beautiful, smart, and just as peculiar as he is. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they're going to give us our fourth grandchild in January, and uh, he's going to be a boy. And, uh, huh? You're going to get your time in just a moment, huh? <laughs> and then we've got, we've got a, our youngest daughter. She's 22, and she graduates from Baylor University in uh, December, and then she'll go on to law school. But I just said that to say all this. Uh, 
I'm I'm proud of my kids. I'm proud of my kids, and I I give uh, you know the credit to to Pam because I was flying all the time, and uh, she realized that raising kids was a ministry, and she took it very serious, and uh, just just did it incredible. When we got married, it was like, boy, one thing I've learned, and I know Pam has learned, because I prophesied her into marriage. <laughs> I told her, if you don't marry me, the Lord's going to strike you. No, I didn't. <laughs> but I did. I prophesied to her. <laughs> and uh, she obeyed God and married me. And I don't even think she loved me when she married me, did you? I don't think you did, because you, you grow into love. You know that, right? I think she was more in, enamored with me being a man of God. and uh, Because you just don't look at me and look at her and put us together. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but love grows. And... I learned so much. One thing I learned, just because something God's is God's will does not mean it's going to be easy. Did you hear what I just said? I said a mouthful right there. Just because something is God's will doesn't mean it's going to be easy. In fact, that's where the war really is. But I'd rather be in the will of God fighting the enemy than out of the will of God fighting him. And I was thinking about you know, just before Pastor Greg introduced me, I was, I was standing there talking to myself, having a little conversation. It was pretty cool. And I was just kind of going over some things. And I'm thinking about, I had to look at my wife and say, Honey, I love you. Didn't I do that about five minutes ago, right? Because I just reminded myself of how blessed I am, how blessed we are, that if, if I wasn't focused I couldn't hear from God. You hear what I just said? You can't have chaos in your family. Listen to me now, because this is true. You can't have chaos, bad relationship with your kids or with your husband and your wife, and then expect to be used by God in a great way. It just ain't going to happen. And so, I've learned over the years to really, really actively love my wife, respect her, and really work on that relationship. I, I was talking to Pastor Hap. I hope this is all right. Is this boring to you? Okay. But I was talking because I, when I started out in the ministry over 37 years ago, there was a great man of God named John Min. He's 86 years old now, 87. He's in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. He's one of the men that had the greatest impact on me. Now, I didn't spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours with him. He has written any books. But if you ever get an opportunity to spend five minutes with him, you'll never be the same again. Because I've never met a man as humble and wise and godly as him. He started churches in New Brunswick, where I'm from, in Nova Scotia. Him and his wife, Nyla. But when I, I'll never forget, when I started the ministry 37 years ago, I went to preach for him. And, and you got a picture. He's tall, slim, and he looks like a Charlton Heston. And he sounds like a Charlton Heston. But he's, he's that statesmanly and debonair. He's so kind. He looked at me. I was what, 19 and a half years old? He said, Brother Lloyd, God is going to take you to the world. And he was so excited for me. He said, you're going to do great. God is going to use you all over the world. He said, you're going to meet some great men and women of God. And just remember, every one of them have a nugget of wisdom for you to add to your life. Be a good listener. Ask good questions. 
because that's what life is about learning. As you can see, that still touches me today. It's still with me today. Pastor Half was talking before service. I said, you ready for a great week? He said, oh, yes. He said, I'm going to work and work and work. But he said, I'd like to, ha I'd like to take a couple days because I like to take my wife out of town, you know. You see how important that is? You see, great men and women of God have a great relationship, not just with God, but with each other. Amen? Amen. I could not stand up here tonight and focus and hear from God and minister if my relationship was not on an equal footing with my wife. I've been in, I got the surprise of my lifetime years ago in Jackson, Mississippi. I ain't telling you who, but it was in Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> it was so weird. I was invited to, to preach for this guy. He had a large church. And we was there, I was supposed to be like a Sunday through Wednesday, right? And I get there, and I'm trying to remember, because this was a long time ago, but I, it, was, it was unbelievable. <laughs> this pastor was like 60-some years old, and his wife was 60-some. And we gathered early. He said, Prophet, why don't you come? And, and join with me before service, and let's pray with all of our leaders. I said, sure. Now, this was a Sunday morning, and we were supposed to go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I've never done this before, but you'll understand in a moment. Uh, we gathered and for prayer, and I saw there was probably 15 people. A couple people kind of stood out to me in the spirit. But I didn't have it all. Didn't know what it was all about. Long story made short. <laughs> we had a great service that Sunday morning. And then after service, the pastor put me in his car and said, we're going to go eat, have a great service tonight. I said, Pastor, I'm leaving today. He said, what? I said, yeah, I'm leaving today. And he said, no, no, we got service tonight. And I said, no, I'm not staying. Why? I said, because you're having an, an, an adulterous affair. And he said, I am? <laughs> that was kind of, when he said that, I had to laugh because it was kind of humorous. He said, I am? I said, yeah. He said, and then he was just trying to play dumb. He said, with who? And I said, the young blonde lady that sat on the right side with the two boys sitting in the same row with her, three rows back. And he admitted it. And I left. Come to find out, him and his wife were had this six or 7,000 square foot home. He lived on one end of it and she lived on the other. It's just so important. No matter how great you get, no matter how blessed you are, remember, marriage is a ministry. Raising children is a ministry. Having a good relationship between with your in-laws. I have to work on mine sometimes, don't, don't I? I do. I just tell you. I, and I've got the greatest in-laws in the world, but I can get pretty stupid sometimes. Right? No. Uh, and, I, and I confess too much, too. Come on up, honey. <laughs> Come on up, hon. Would you welcome my wife here tonight? I don't know where that came from. You can correct it if you would like. No, that's okay. <laughs> he can be hard to follow sometimes. <laughs> Never know what he's going to say, but I think it has something to do with being number 18 of 19. I don't know. But I just want to say how good it is to be back at Gateway Church. Um, this morning, Pastor Greg was talking about Lloyd coming here. I, I was trying to figure out how many years ago. I know it's been more than 15 years ago because the first time I met you guys was at our grand opening of our church and he was coming here long before that so it may have been 15 20 years ago that he was coming to greater glory then and of course I was home um, 
being a mom, you know, raising the kids, getting them off to school and helping with homework and all those things that we moms do. And I love being a mom, you know. I remember a lady at our church after she got two of her kids raised and she was like ready for the third one um, to get out of the house, you know, so she could do her thing. But I like grieved when we were empty nest. I mean, I missed um, having my kids there because I love being a mom and it's like those years just flew by. Um, don't they? <laughs> For those that have grown children. And now we're grandparents, as Lloyd already said. And how many grandparents are in the building? Isn't it the most wonderful thing? I mean, my sisters, I have three older sisters, and they were all grandparents before me, but they kept telling me how uh, wonderful it was going to be. But I don't think I was expecting it to be as wonderful as it is. And about, we were, I was here last year in November, and we had just recently transitioned from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, to Dallas, Texas is where we live now. And um, the hardest thing about that transition was leaving my three granddaughters back in North Carolina. And um, I went from seeing them almost every day, and the point was is I could see them every day because they live very close by, to now maybe two or three months going by without getting to, you know, make that trip back. And Lloyd had told me when we moved to Texas, he said, you can go back anytime you want to. But when you're that far, it's 1,047 mi 47 miles. Um, and when you live that far, you can't always just pick up and go. But um, I went back. The, the, the girls' ages are the baby just turned one. Uh, the middle one, Evie, she's going to have a birthday this week, and she's going to be three, and the oldest one's five. And, um, and so, you know, someone said, you get to FaceTime. I'm like, yeah, well, FaceTime, it's good, and, but sometimes it's not enough, right? And so, um, Labor Day weekend, I went to FaceTime them, and um, my little granddaughter, Lila, that's five, she got on the, her mom's phone, and she was like, Grandmother, I was just thinking about you. And when she said that, I just wanted to go right through that phone and just grab her, you know. And I told my husband at that point, it had been over two months since I had seen them, and um, I was like, that's it. You know, I don't want to be traveling on Monday, Labor Day, because a lot of traffic, but Tuesday morning, I'm getting up, and it's not the first time I've done this, but um, that I'm going to drive it, I mean, by myself. And so I got up at 1.30 in the morning and drove 1,047 miles. It's about 17 hours. You lose an hour. And I left at 1.30 because I wanted to get there before their bedtime, which is around 8.30, and I wanted just to see them for a few minutes before they went to bed. And I did that, and I made it. And, of course, they were all three standing in my daughter's sunroom when I was coming down the driveway, jumping up and down. And there's nothing like that, right? And so the next morning, I got up early, and the oldest one, Lila, the five-year-old, she came downstairs. And I don't know if it's because I only saw them a few minutes before bedtime, and she forgot I was there, but it was like she was seeing me for the first time. She come running over to the couch where I was sitting with the arms wide open and saying, Grandmother! And I picked her up, and I put her on my lap, and I was hugging her, and I was holding her. And I told her, I said, oh, my goodness. It was like I knew that I missed you, and I knew that I loved you. But until this moment, when I had her in my arms, I didn't realize how bad I missed her, and I loved her. And she looked at me when I told her that. She says, Grandmother, I never stopped loving you. <laughs> and when she said that, oh, my Lord, it just did something to me. And so when I got back home, I was journaling in my devotion time, and I began to think about my relationship with her and how relating that to our relationship with the Lord. And this morning, Lloyd prophesied that there's going to be another wave of glory. But sometimes to experience that, it's going to cost you something. You might have to get up at 1.30 in the morning. And like the sister that testified about her miracle, and I thought that was so powerful, about, you know, how we need one another, and it's true. It's great to have your pastors and your brothers and sisters in the Lord, but sometimes people get busy, and you have to get on your knees, and you have to touch the Lord for yourself. And, you know, I was thinking about that woman in the Bible with the issue of blood. And did you ever think back how, what that would be like to be on the earth when Jesus actually walked on the earth? And you think about the multitudes of the crowds that he drew that followed him. But not everybody in that crowd, some people were just there to observe, right? Not everybody there got a miracle. Not everybody's life was changed. But I was thinking about that woman with the issue of blood, how she got desperate. 
It's kind of like when you come to church and we all get a touch from the Lord or during the week we're having our prayer and devotion and maybe the Lord speaks to you or you get a little glimpse, but then sometimes you get in this situation, a desperate situation like I was that you're like, it's not enough. It's like FaceTime. It's not enough. You know, you want to be in his presence and you want to be like that woman with the issue of blood and you want to break through that crowd and touch the hem of his garment. You're like, it's not enough to just see you. God, I want to touch you. I want to feel you. And can't you just hear the Lord even saying to her? Because this woman with the issue of blood, she was considered unclean. And I, I begin to think about everything that she must have suffered, the isolation and feeling unloved and unwanted. She was unclean. But when she got on her hands and knees and made her way through that crowd to touch the hem of his garment, he called her daughter. And can't you just hear him telling her, just like my granddaughter said, he said, I always, I never stopped loving you. I was always with you. You've, ne you've never been alone. He said, I will never leave you. I will forsake you. I will never forsake you. He loves you. I want you to experience what he prophesied this morning, his glory. And that's going to take being like that woman and just pushing through. Amen. Um, it just so happens I thought that was something that Lloyd, last time we were here, Lloyd's cut about seven different CDs over the 35 years. And we only brought one. The glory is here. <laughs> that wasn't planned. The Lord just spoke that to him this morning. But we, I, you know, we were packing and we were trying to pack light. And I told him, I said, the last time we were here, we brought all of the product. And I was like, why don't we just bless these people with this CD? That's what we had decided to do as a gift. It is a gift, no charge. And it's out there on the table. And um, he wrote this song when he was in a crusade with Benny Hinn. And he saw a little, I wasn't there, but he saw a six-year-old boy receive his eyesight. And the Lord gave him that song, The Glory Is Here. The word the Lord says, you're fixing to experience a new wave of glory. This just may become y'all's theme song. I don't know. <laughs> but the glory is here. It's a powerful song. And I thought this morning when he said gateway, it used to be greater glory. But it's not two names. It really is just one name. This church will be a gateway for people to come and experience the greater glory of God. Amen. We love you guys. We're so excited about what God's doing here. We're excited about what he's going to do. And thank you so much for having us. God bless y'all. Thank you, honey. Amen. That's beautiful. The gateway to greater glory. Wow, I love that. Yep. Write that down, everybody. That's prophetic. And we bring the, the one CD. <laughs> the glory is here. I mean, if that don't light your fire, your woods are too wet. <laughs> right? Okay, so here we go. Write that down too, right, Hap? <laughs> Everybody say baptism. The baptism of the baptism of water and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to teach for a few moments tonight uh, on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Okay, the, bap the word baptize or baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo. And that Greek word meaning, it means to be submerged. It means to be uh, overwhelmed, to be waterlogged. And, they, and the Greeks got that word baptism uh, when, because ships, back in the ancient days, ships would sink. And uh, they would be submerged underwater and waterlogged. And that's where they come up with that the Greek word, baptism. And so when you get baptized in water, you don't get sprinkled. You get submerged. You get overwhelmed. Right? You get waterlogged. Because that's what the word means. And so when I get baptized in the Holy Spirit, I get submerged with it. I get overwhelmed. It overflows me. I get waterlogged with it, right? 
So you are baptized when you are completely, uh, when you're completely overwhelmed with someone or something. It's kind of unique because it talks about Israel. They was in 1 Corinthians 10 and uh, 2, it says they were baptized into Moses. Now, here's why, uh, and uh, where's my clock? I saw a clock here somewhere today. Oh, here, hello, clock, okay. <laughs> All right, for all the clock watchers, it's ten. It's two minutes after seven. <laughs> One pastor told me, he said, now, Lloyd, I was on a Sunday morning. He said, you preach all you want, minister all you want. We leave at 12. <laughs> Here's why baptism is, is so important. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because you and I... Are three dimensional. Three and one. We're spirit, soul, and body. And your spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is the part of you that's created in God's image. Okay? That's the part of you that's created in God's image. In fact, when salvation comes to you, when the Holy Spirit comes to you, guess where he goes first? To your spirit. Your soul is the psychological part of you. That's the part of your will, your emotions, your thoughts, your desires. That's what that is. In fact, in the garden, man rejected God. And because of him disobeying God, man was put out of fellowship with God. But through Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice and what he did on Calvary, when you and I repent of our sins and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he puts us back in the fellowship with the Father. And so when you repent of your sins and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're joined back in the fellowship with God. I love the way Paul said it in 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. He that is joined to God is one spirit with him. Here's an important thing to remember and understand about the Holy Spirit. There's two parts to baptism. Okay? The first part is when the Holy Spirit, through you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when the Holy Spirit comes inside of you. I call that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Second part is after He comes inside of you, you want Him in all of you. Because your spirit, soul, and body. And when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he comes to your spirit first. But I want the second part to the baptism. What happens in that part? That's what I call the outflowing. The first part is the indwelling. The second part is is the outflowing. That's when he moves out beyond your spirit into your soul. He baptizes your mind. He baptizes your personality. You know, with he baptizes your personality with the fruit of his Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, right? Amen? And he baptizes your, your decision-making. He baptizes you, and so you're able to forgive and and move on in life. Amen? That's so important to understand. So, there's the inflow of the Holy Spirit. That's salvation. And then there's the outflow of the Holy Spirit. That's called the baptism. 
John 14 and 23 says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father, we will come to him and love him, and we will make our home in him. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, the Godhead coming in you when you, when you repent and accept him in your life. John 14 and 16, Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a holy baptism. When you think of the word holy, what are some of the synonyms that comes to your mind? Whole, clean, pure, right? Undefiled. But I think it's kind of weird if you say, I want the Holy Spirit, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then somebody comes along and almost thinks, makes you think that, oh, you're not holy enough to receive the Holy Spirit. You're not good enough. You're not holy enough. You, when, when it's a gift anyway. So... The baptism is holy, but to say you have to be holy before receiving the Holy Spirit. Well, it's like telling somebody you have to be clean before you take a bath. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, His work is to make you whole. To make you healthy in your mind, your soul, and your body. And He will do that from where He already lives. Here's another good thing about the Holy Spirit. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, he said in 6th verse, I believe it is, he said, God raised us up, made us sit together in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Did you hear what I just read? You may not be aware of it. You may not feel it. But right now, at this moment, your spiritual position in Christ is in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Where is Christ Jesus? At the right hand of the Father, which, which symbolizes the side of authority. Now the problem is, we don't feel like it half of the time because... We dwell in the soulish realm more than we do the spirit realm. And we're not renewed in the Holy Spirit every day, so we can think spiritually every day. Your spirit, you may not feel where you are, but listen to what I'm saying to you. Your spirit is aware of God and God's presence at all times. Do you know that your spirit never sleeps? Your soul can sleep. Your mind, your body can sleep. You're going to go to sleep tonight. But your spirit is going to be aware of God at all the times. How many has ever been woken up in the middle of the night and someone said, get up and pray? You probably have done that more than once. How many in this place has truly known that you've had a spiritual dream while you were sleeping before? Because your spirit is aware of God at all the times. God can speak in the night hours while you're sleeping. He can speak to you through dreams, through visions. He can speak to you to get up and pray for this one and pray for that one. Your spirit is aware of God at all times, but the problem is you're not aware of your spirit at all times. We are aware of our flesh, but not our spirit. And because we're not aware of our spirit is because we are used to living life in the soulish and intellectual realm. The Holy Spirit is a personal being. He's not an it. Did you hear what I just said? We used to grow up. And they called the Holy Spirit it. 
because we were so, we had some Pentecostal doctrine that really was kind of, kind of, kind of wrong, kind of off. Therefore, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't call Jesus Father. We couldn't call the Holy Spirit Him because, you know, we just got some weirdness about the Scripture. But, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I read my Bible, and nowhere in the Bible is the Holy Spirit described as an object. He's a personal being. And because we looked at the Holy Spirit as an it, in our mind, he, come, he came in shapes and sizes. We used to go home, and they'd be commenting on who got the Holy Ghost that night, on a Sunday night. Now, this is old-time Pentecost that I was raised in, right? And I would hear my sisters, and you know, talking to my mother, and they'd be saying, you know, and other people, did that lady get the Holy Ghost? And, you know, while I was praying, she got, she got some of it. She got some of it. Some of it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. It's a he. Here's the other thing. You can't get little of him. And you can't get much of him. You either got all of him, or you don't have none of him at all. The Holy Spirit. That's like, you know, if I, what would you think of me if you, uh, you know, what's your name? Micah. If Micah, you know, if, if, uh, you know, Hap comes to me and says, hey, Lloyd, I heard Micah was at your and Pam's house the other night for dinner. And I said, yeah, but we only had part of Micah. <laughs> and Hap would say, what? I said, yeah, we only had part of Micah that night. We hope to get the rest of Micah the next week. <laughs> Does that make sense? No. But that's the way we treat the Holy Spirit in our house. I mean, it would be kind of weird if I looked at heaven and said, no, no, we, no, we only had part of Micah for dinner. Hope to have the rest of Micah next week. What about if Hap asked me and said, Lloyd, was Micah at your house for dinner the other night, and I was like, oh, yeah, we had him for dinner. I wasn't lying. He was at my house. He was in my di We ate dinner together. But Micah might not have been in all of my house because Pam might have said, look, don't take him in the bedrooms. They're a mess. <laughs> now, my wife is immaculate housekeeper so this is kind of tough using her for an example but we're just having fun <laughs> what if I said well pastor Hap, yeah Micah was at the house for dinner but he wasn't in the kitchen because the kitchen was a mess and he wasn't in any of the bedrooms because there was a mess too and he sure wasn't in the den because that was a mess too but he was in my house he just wasn't in all of it. And see, that's the way people are with the Holy Spirit. You get him, and you get all of him, but he doesn't get all of you. Because you're almost too embarrassed to open up the door of that area of your house. Because you had a bad experience back then. And that room's still messy. Are you hearing me tonight? But do you have the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. Yes, you do. But the Holy Spirit doesn't have all of you. Because you're afraid to open up this room. Because there's a lot of pain in that room. And there's still some unforgiveness in that room. And you, the Holy Spirit hasn't been in there yet. When that's just the place where he needs to be tonight. 
you hear me tonight? Because you're never going to be whole until the Holy Spirit rules your life. And you're never going to be whole and blessed the way God planned you to be until you open up and say, God, have at it. I, re I release every room in my house. I release every room of my past, every room of my pain, every room of my unforgiveness, every room of my lying, every room of my deceit, every room of my cheating. I release it all. And here comes the Holy Spirit. And he's going to do such a renovation job on that room that you're actually going to feel that you're born again all over again. That's the beauty of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see, <clears throat> it's not about how much of you do you, how much of the Holy Spirit do you have, is how much of the Holy Spirit, how much of you does the Holy Spirit have? Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is not letting the Spirit in. You got the Holy Spirit in when you accept the Jesus as your Savior. Jesus said, We will come to you. But really, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is letting him out of where he is in your spirit. So he can move and overflow and overwhelm and submerge every rest of your being. Does that make sense? And so tonight... You I'm done telling you where you're going to live and where you can't live, where you can go and where you can't go. And he, he doesn't leave your spirit. He moves beyond your spirit. He's going to baptize you, your spirit. And then what are your next soul? So he's going to baptize your soul. What's after soul? Body. He's going to baptize your body. <laughs> the irrigation canal in Southern California is dry most of the year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Fields are dry. Vegetation is dry and dead. And certain time of the year, they... And water begins to flow. The first thing that happens in the can canal is the canal is refreshed. By what? By cool, living, flowing water. And the first thing the water does when it comes in the cal canal, it carries away debris. And it carries away dust. And, 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 and uh, when it carries away the dirt and the grime and the debris and the dust that has gathered over the last few months, flowers begin to spring to life again. And grass begins to green again. And the flowers are on both banks of the canal. And the grass is green and flourishing again. And the trees on both uh, uh Sides of the banks of the canal are refreshed and again. And guess what? It doesn't stop there. Because all along the canal, the farmers open up the gates to their fields. And water begins to flow into the fields and brings the, the desert to life again. That's why Jesus said it will be in you a spring of living water, a reservoir, the Holy Spirit. The reservoir of the Holy Ghost is within you. And when you allow the indwelling of the Holy Spirit water to flow out into your soul and into your body. I'll never forget, I was in Kansas years ago and... Uh, so many people were being healed. And I gave an altar call. And I don't know, 50, 60 people come down to be saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
And I taught them. I was taking a few moments, and I was just teaching them and getting a hold of their faith. And I was telling them the principle of repentance and lifting your hands and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I said this. I said, when you speak in tongues, that means the Holy Spirit is baptized in your entire being. Spirit, soul, and body. You've repented. You accepted Jesus as your Savior. Now you want him to waterlog you with it. You want to be baptized with him. So he's going to move out from your spirit into your soul. So you're going to get joy in your mind, peace in your mind. You're going to be your personality. Oh, man, I just feel so good. And then you're, and then he's not going to stop in your soul. He's going to flow it into your body. So because salvation means complete wholeness. That's what the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit is to bring to reality what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He saved you, he healed you, and he delivered you on the cross. And the Holy Spirit is to bring that reality into fruition to you. So I told the people, I said, look, when you speak in tongues, you're going to be healed. And they lifted up their hands, they got baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and all of a sudden, people started screaming. The people, and like hysterically, i never forget one lady, she was standing over on this side, and I said, you're screaming? She said, yes, because I'm healed. I said, what happened? She said, you say when I speak in tongues, I'll be healed. I said, yeah. She said, I've been completely deaf since I was a child in this left ear. When I began to speak in tongues, my ear popped open. I'm hearing. So that's the work of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your mind comes to alive, comes alive with a new way of thinking. Your joy is, I mean, it's just incredible. The living water begins to flow out to you, from you into others. When they turned the, the reservoir on the gates of the canal, who did I tell you, or what did I tell you got refreshed first, the canal? You're going to be baptized tonight, anew and afresh, in the Holy Spirit. And you know what that means? You're going to get refreshed first. A God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless your seed. And through you, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. How many times do we miss being blessed ourselves because we're so focused on looking what looking at what this blessing is going to do I mean it's simple Abraham was going to be blessed first and because he is blessed God said you're going to bless the nations of the earth don't let the devil tell you you're greedy or you're carnal because you're wanting to be blessed. It's a natural occurrence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit to bless you first. Does that make sense? And so you need to start expecting every day. When you pray in tongues, expect to be blessed and refreshed. Now let me show you something else. And this is important. I'll be done here in about eight minutes, okay? But this is important. Words are powerful. Words are powerful. Proverbs 18 and 21, the, life of the, uh, the power of life and death is in the tongue. The power of blessing and cursing is in the tongue. It's not strange to me that God would give us a sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit of speaking in tongues. It's not strange at all. Because the only member of your body that can't be tamed, Jesus said, is your tongue. And so God just said, you know what? Boy, oh boy. I'm really going to put a licking on the enemy. Because that enemy loves to use everybody's tongue to criticize, to judge, to lie, to hate. To cuss. To even use my name in vain. So I'm going to baptize them. And the first sign of the baptism is they're going to speak with new tongues. 
And here's the other thing. The enemy is not even going to know what they're saying. And no angel in heaven is going to interpret because they're not going to know either. Only I, God the Father, will know what they're saying because it's the Holy Spirit praying through them to me. And you and I have got down so many times, and we prayed in our own language. If your native language is Spanish, you prayed in Spanish. If your na native language is French, you prayed in French. If your native language is English, you prayed in English. But have you ever noticed you prayed so many times, and you're telling God what you need, and all of a sudden it seems like war breaks out on everything you prayed for? You know why so many times? Because the devil heard you. And he understood what you were saying. I'm not saying all the times, but I know it's many times. And the devil's heard you praying for your child. <laughs> and he goes to working at your child even more. He heard you praying for your marriage, and he's just throwing everything but the kitchen sink at your marriage the next day. He heard you praying for your a promotion at your job, and all of a sudden, man, he chaos breaks out. But the Bible says we don't know what to pray, but the Spirit knows what to pray. I grew up in Canada, New Brunswick. You know we had party lines? Do you know what party lines were? That's when you shared a telephone line with four or five other families. And me being the little person I was, I would pick up that phone like a little devil. I would just let that thing go up and just take my hand and put over the speaking part and just listen. I had to repent. I listen to neighbors talking about net neighbors. <laughs> Speaking in tongues is a direct line from your soul to the throne of grace. Nobody listens. Nobody interrupts. It knows. He knows what to pray. We have abused the power to speak. James said in James 3 and 6, the tongue is like fire set up among members, staining the body set on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by, house, by hell. So our spirit needed to be tamed. Because your voice is the main outlet of your whole being. <laughs> so praying in tongues, what is it? It's speaking to God. Did you hear what I just said? Praying in tongues is speaking to God. The other thing is, when you pray in tongues, you're creating a pathway for the Holy Spirit to move out into your body and your soul. You're letting, so when you pray in tongues, you're letting God have a greater influence over your whole being. Every day, I pray in tongues. I'll never forget, I got to spend three or four hours with Earl Roberts. About a year and a half before he died, went to heaven. And I was invited to his home in Newport, California. Got a simple, had a little simple little condominium. But I'll never forget when we walked in. Here's what he said. And he was like 92 or 90, 91 or 92 then. And you can just hear his voice. <gasps> he got a little ho hoarseness there, right? A little raspy. When we walked in, hugged his neck, he said, I want you to know that I've spent one hour praying in tongues before you came. Now, look, this guy's 91, 92 years old. He had nothing to impress me about. He's not trying to make me think, boy, what a great man of God. No, no, this was the system of heaven that he lived in. And that stuck with me. And then we just sat down. He began to talk about his ministry and 
different experiences. And then he started giving us nuggets about the Holy Spirit. He said this. He said, I have never had anybody. I've never met a president. I've never went on my TV show. I've never, when when we were having the large tent meetings around the world, he said, I would not go on the platform unless I prayed through in the Holy Spirit. And he said, sometimes it took two minutes, sometimes it took two hours. But he said, I knew the breakthrough always happens for me when I pray in the Holy Spirit. Clarity comes. My attitude has changed. Fear is gone. Doubt, worry, everything. Everything is perfectly aligned in my life when I pray in the Holy Spirit. Anybody just making sense to you tonight? The indwelling is for sanctification. The outpouring is for the power. Now let me end with this. If you can come to the keyboards here. Salvation. People can be saved individually. Now listen to what I'm about to say here, because this is so important. People can be saved individually, like the thief on the cross. But when it comes to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it's not just for an individual. It's for the whole body. Do you know what? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place, one mind, one accord. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like as of a rushing mighty one wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Cloven tongues like a fire sat upon each of them, and they were all. Did you hear? They were all. Didn't say some. Did not say one. It says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Now when I read that, and when I think about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, I get it now. Salvation is individual, but the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that's corporate. That's corporate. Anything can happen. Any kind of miracle can take place. Anything, any breakthrough, when everybody in the local body is baptized in the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? So the outpouring is for the whole body. Kind of picture like the outpouring being the cement that takes all the separated stones and joins them together to make one building. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether Jews, Greeks, slaves, or free, and we have all been made to drink into one spirit. Isn't that beautiful? Stand to your feet tonight. I want to just begin to worship the Lord. Just to worship the Lord. And I don't know what God is going to do. I don't know what. I mean, this is this is the thing about the Holy Spirit. He leads us. He guides us. But I know I'm in the Spirit right now. Because I'm in His presence. And I'm Because I'm not focused on anything else. I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I'm not thinking about bills. I'm not thinking about anything except Him. His presence. His presence. And He told me in His Word, if you will seek me, you will find me. And I can feel a fresh baptism coming in me, coming on me.
Remember, spirit, soul, and body. The indwelling. <laughs> I don't get saved every day because I am saved. I don't have to be saved every day. I'm saved. But I can get renewed and baptized every day to keep my soul and body in line with the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Y'all with me now? Now, this is very, very important because as they quietly just play it, I just want us to begin to think about the Holy Spirit. And if you think about the Holy Spirit, think about Him. Listen. If you think on Him, He's going to put some thoughts in your mind. He'll start speaking to you. The wonderful work of the Holy Spirit is like this. He doesn't want me thinking about anything right now except Him. And if I'll just only think on Him, He'll do my thinking for me. I have a choice. I can think and worry about my issues and only make them worse or I can think on him and let him think about my issues and he'll solve every one of them oh that's beautiful that makes perfect sense to me everybody leave your seat and come and down stand down here Let's come together. And let's just get in the spirit. And just begin to pray in the spirit. If you've never received the gift of the Holy Spirit, receive him right now. And just begin to pray in the spirit, the heavenly language. Don't worry what it sounds like. Just speak it out. Just speak him. Just speak the words you're hearing in your mind. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Oh, that's beautiful. It's for the whole body. This is a heavenly experience tonight. It's for the whole body. When you pray in the Spirit, remember, He's moving out into your soul. He's blessing your mind with peace and joy. He's anointing your mind right now. He's taking depression. He's taking fear because you're being baptized, submerged in your soul, your psychological part. No more fear. No more worry. No more doubt. In the name of Jesus, just let him just pray in the spirit, speak in other tongues, and let the Holy Spirit baptize your mind, your thoughts. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. And at His right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Every young person baptized in the Holy Spirit. And He's not just going to stop in your mind. He's going to move out into your body. And so if you've got diseases in your body, right now as you pray in tongues... The Holy Spirit is healing your body. Healing your body. He's bringing to pass what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago. You can feel the pain leaving. You can feel diseases leaving. Expect miracles to take place. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus.
I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Turn the lights back up, please. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow, somebody's being healed in their right shoulder right now. Somebody's being healed in your right shoulder. Thank you, Jesus. Move it around. God is healing it. God is healing it right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody that's going to go to the dentist or a root canal. It doesn't have to happen now. God just healed your tooth in the name of Jesus. Give God praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm going to begin to pray for you. Okay, and I want you to hear this because I'm going to begin, I'm going to begin to pray for you. Okay, because there's certain prayers that the Holy Spirit directed me to pray over you and prophesy these prayers over you. Okay? The Holy Spirit is charging everybody for the next seven days, three times a day. Now, I know we should be doing this every day, but, but many times God gives you an incentive by saying, do this this so many days. Because what it do, it's creating a pattern, creating a good habit in your life so you can do this but for the next seven days three times a day morning noon and evening take 15 minutes look at the clock take 15 minutes and do nothing but pray in the Holy Spirit pray in tongues just pray in tongues I do this every day Pam does it every day and I know there's people here that do it every day but I'm telling you, there are some people that haven't done this. God is going to make himself so real to you. And you're going to begin to experience miracles, breakthroughs that are just supernatural that, that you never, you know that you forgot all about it. But God is going to do it for, for you. Because that's the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life. So for the next seven days, in the name of Jesus, pray morning three times a day, 15 minutes, and have a journal there. This is so important. Have a pen and paper close by. Because while you're praying in the Holy Spirit, may not happen the first day, may not happen the second but it's going to happen. It's going to kick in. I promise you. Because your ears are going to start being alerted. And the, your spiritual ears and the Holy Spirit is going to begin to talk to you. And if you get a thought in your mind. And, 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 and just wow. That's beautiful. Wow. Just write it down. Because that's the Holy Spirit. He's talking to you. He's talking to you. You'll have dreams in the next seven days. You'll see visions. Just make sure you write these things down. See, right now, I'm seeing a vision of the glory of God. The glory of God. Yes, Lord. When I say yes, Lord, I am talking to Him. He is talking to me. We have a beautiful relationship thank you Lord thank you Jesus yes Lord thank you Jesus I'm seeing a fresh wave of God's glory and I'm telling you you people need to start inviting people to this church and you need to tell them to come and worship Jehovah God Almighty. If you'll tell them, they'll come.
help raise your right hand. God wants me to prophesy to you right now. Spirit of the Lord says that you have sown seeds of reconciliation. You have sown the seeds of reconciliation. I don't know when this was, but I know that's what God says. You have sown seeds of racial reconciliation. I prophesy to that to you right now. No, not many even know about it, the Lord says, but you know it. You know it. And now the gates are open up. And I prophesy now that what you thought wasn't a big deed at all. God says, it's time for that wave of glory to come because I see you just standing. I see you standing. And there, you're standing with African Americans. You're standing with Spanish. You're standing with whites. You're standing with all these different ethnicities <laughs> for the glory of God. And that's what you told God. I'm doing it for you, God. I'm doing it for your glory. And I'm telling you, this church has just been elevated in the spirit for racial reconciliation. So God says, open up the gates of your heart. Open up the gates of this building because I'm sending so many different races because they're my creation. They're my people. And I'm commanding you, saith the Lord, to open up your heart because some of us, oh, Holy Spirit needs to visit that racial part of your life that you've had issues with and you could never reconcile. You need to ask God to go into that room tonight and take out all the prejudices. Take it out in Jesus' name and wash it away under the blood with the rest of the sin and the debris. In the name of Jesus, God, purify our hearts tonight. Go in every room because, Lord, we're Christians, but we've still got racial tendencies, racial prejudices. Father, we are the light of the world. Nothing in this world reflects light. That's why you told us we are the light. We are light in darkness. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, flow in our hearts and take out all racial issues so we can truly love our neighbor as ourself, whether they're black, white, brown, Asian, no matter who they are, we are all one family of God. That's what the Lord told me, and that's what the Lord showed me. I saw it in the Holy Spirit. I saw it in the Holy Spirit. I saw it in the Holy Spirit. And the Lord says, you will be rewarded greatly because you didn't, you just did it. The Spirit of the Lord says, you just did it. You just did it. You wasn't looking for any attention. No, you just did it because it was the right thing. Whatever that is, the Spirit of the Lord says, thank you. Thank you because I'm bringing a miracle of new ways of glory through it now. And they're going to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Oh, glory. When you pray in the next seven days, thank God for bringing all the different ethnicities to Gateway. Thank Him. Because prophecy, a prophet specializes. He just doesn't bring general. He goes into the heavenlies and he goes pulls down certain things that only God knows. Only God knows and he gives it to you. And you take it and you war with it. You pray with it. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So make sure you understand that God is moving and God is speaking in this room tonight. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm praying for your children right now. I'm prophesying over your children. Every child in the name of Jesus will have a heart to receive. 
walk in obedience in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh I just Spirit of the Lord's touching somebody named Ann or Anna who knows Ann or Anna is there an Ann or Anna here Anna who is that that's your daughter come here quickly where's she at you know the Lord's touching her right now he's touching her heart and he's healing her broken heart right now lift your hands father in the name of Jesus receive the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ come on keep your hands up just stay in the presence of God this is this is not an effort this is just a flow just just a flow in the presence of God see God knows who to speak to God knows what to say and let me just let me give you another quick little teaching about the prophetic and this is so important for you to understand I just prophesied I don't know her from Adam okay but God knows her and God knows who her family is and who her children is and so all of a sudden while I'm praying for your children I'm in the spirit realm just like you are but I have been in this ministry of prophetic so long until I just know how to I know how to reach to God like that does that make sense I'm skilled at it in the spirit now and all of a sudden when I was praying for your children I heard Anna and God did not divert to another lane he stayed right in that whole zone children 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 and she comes and that's my daughter well God knows what's going on with her daughter but here's the beautiful principle I can't I'm in the flesh I'm not an angel I'm not I can't stand in front of every one of you and tell you your name tell your daughter's name I can't do that I'm not I'm I can't do that Paul said we know in part and we prophesy in part I'm I'm not that's but well then why would God speak to you prophet Lloyd about this one lady and not to build your faith because here's the beautiful principle God just spoke to her but he's saying this is words for you and your children too so God has built your faith tonight by zeroing in on one person whose daughter's at home sitting right now and some of you every <laughs> your parents you're concerned about your children what they're doing right now well let this refresh you tonight in the Holy Ghost hey God knows about my need and so if I prophesy to her and you may be standing here saying well man my child needs that same miracle well speak it that's the whole point it's for you too you can you can say I received that for my family right now I received that for my daughter for my son right now and that same word that was spoken over her will come to you will come to you will come to you will come to you it's part of the baptism it's part of being one mind in one accord come on somebody glory to God okay Lord hallelujah the Lord said pray for another Anna or Anna Hannah, Hannah or Anna She's right out there. It's my daughter. that's your daughter where is she I gotta see you <laughs> come on down here thank you Lord don't be afraid I don't hurt you honey come down here hallelujah hallelujah oh okay I see some uh, in the spirit I'm seeing a skinny kind of a slender young man he's kind of tall and thin does anybody know anybody named Frank or Frankie I just saw he's got looked like in the spirit it looked like he had light hair who said that wow 
Did you hear what it just said? The Lord just... This, see, this blows my mind. This blows my mind. It blows my mind. Trust me. But I heard in the Spirit, because that's what I'm skilled in the Spirit. I heard... Frankie or Frank and I saw an image in the spirit I saw light hair guy kind of pale looking skinny but he's got a little he floats like a butterfly sometimes he's almost too much of a free spirit right and his mother has an anointing upon her does his mother go to church here and what's his mother's name Anna wow You know what the Lord's doing right now? He's gathering a, another nucleus of people to be a part of this church. And they're very European. They're very European. And wow, that's just beautiful. Hallelujah. So, this is another thing about the prophetic. The prophetic does, is not isolated in walls. It's not isolated in walls. Right now, you should be expecting. God told me many years ago, He said, when, I, when you worship me in here, I'm working out there. And you know that when you leave this building tonight, bad things ain't going to happen it's going to be glorious because you're leaving under a fresh mantle of glory okay in Pennsylvania I called out a man and uh, in this building okay it was on a Sunday night uh, or Friday night Saturday night I said fear the Lord I just started talking to the spirit I said where's your daughter he said she ran away two years ago I don't know where she is I said, when's the last time you talked? It's been two years. And all of a sudden, before I even thought about it, I was just prophesying. I said, she's going to be back before you know it. And I said, I don't like to say I, because it really was the Holy Ghost that said it. The Holy Ghost spoke through me and said, tell her she needs to come back to Christ. And when she does... God will give her new kidneys. Now here's a man that hasn't talked to his daughter in two years. And I, as I recall, I don't even think he knew she had kidney trouble. As God is my witness, I don't make stuff up. As God is my witness, that night, God touched him. He came back to service the next night. And he walked down. And he said, this is my daughter. As God is my witness. This is part of the prophecy that was on Dateline, NBC, and all that stuff. With Stone Phillips years ago. It was just phenomenal. This is my daughter. Remember what the prophetic word said? Before you know it, she'll be back. Do you know what he told me? He said, when I went home after service last night, my daughter was sitting in her car waiting for me in the driveway. That is the truth. And I looked at her. I said, do you want to come back to Jesus? She said, yes. I said, what about kidney? kidney? She said, I've been on kidney dialysis. God gave her brand new kidneys that night. I mean physically healed her that's why you've got to understand the power of the Holy Spirit and you've got to you've just you've got to stay in the spirit you got to stay in the spirit come here young lady you snuck off there what did you sneak off for huh being rebellious and disobedient or what huh you were? 
Well, talk to me in front of everybody. <laughs> How old are you? Lift your hands to Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. You got a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. And the Lord's anointing your voice tonight because He wants you to sing for Him. He wants you to sing. Would you do that for Him? You don't think you can? Oh, yes, you can. Because God gives you the gift of music tonight. Say, thank you, Jesus. I re Keep your hands up. <laughs> I receive it. Every gift that you're giving me. In Jesus' name. I will sing for you. I will smile for you. I will bring joy wherever I am. Starting in my home. That's beautiful. Now, you're never going to be the same again. Would you do me a favor? Start reading your Bible. Do that, okay? Okay? Just pray a little more. Because God's bringing your personality out like a beautiful blossom. Make sense? You'll never be the same again. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> The Lord is moving, and uh, you're going to start seeing miracles. <laughs> Who's involved? Who, who likes to go to nursing homes? I just saw God healing people there. Come down here. Come in front of me. <laughs> Lift your hands. What's your name, huh? Andrea, what's your name? Barbara, what's your name, huh? Lift your hands, everybody. Lord, I release miracles at the nursing home. Thank you for come from these precious people in the name of Jesus thank you Father just take the glory of God to these nursing homes in the name of Jesus glory be to God God's touching some guy named James or Jamie who knows James or Jamie hallelujah who is it your husband come down here you know what there may be more than one so tell me who is it He's what? Good stuff? Yeah, does he go to church? Huh? Okay. Hallelujah. James, your husband? Your husband, James, too? They go to church? Oh, God's going to touch him. Yes, yes. Does he go to church? Good. God's touching him right now. Who is James? You have a daughter-in-law, Jamie. Who is James or Jamie? Wow. A lot of James is coming tonight. Amen. What's your first? Mary. Mary. Who is James or Jamie? Son-in-law. Glory be to God. Your son's name is James. Who is James Amber or Ambry or? I don't know. I'm just getting a bit of it, but there's an A-M in the last name. Help me out. If you know that if, if this rings a bell, just tell me. Jamie or James, and there's an A-M in the last name. Amber or Ambrose? Come here. What's your son's name? Okay. I'm still stuck on that AM, the last name. Does anybody recognize that? Who is it? Look, see, you can't make this stuff up. You just got to fish in the spirit. You can't hurry God. You got to fish because look how many connections to James here tonight. Hallelujah. Do you have a technology center around here? Is there a technology center close by? Just tell me something.
because I see technology coming in here. Technology is coming in. If you're not having it, you're going to see it. You're going to see it's going to come. God's going to bring technology to this area. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid to interrupt me if I say something that you recognize. You wave your hand and tell me, okay? <clears throat> my new tried to, um, he did a drug and he tried to kill my friend, my best friend. So I'm a little, I, I don't know if he comes back in my life, but I have some trust issues with that. Yeah. Put your guard up. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes. I know both a James and a Jamie. James, he hurt me really, really bad when I was a little girl with words and just, he really broke my heart and just, he really, really hurt me. And then I know a Jamie who is my cousin, cousin, and she doesn't know the Lord. And I have uh, my Uncle Pizza named James, and he doesn't, he's not a he was raised in church, but he no longer goes to church. You can't stop the angels from ministering now. Just let them know they're, they're on assignment from heaven right now. Wow. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm going to lay hands on you. And whatever God needs to do with James, the power of God's going to flow through you to James. And I just want you to just start thanking God for healing James. Thanking God. Just say, James, I forgive you. James, I forgive you. James, I forgive you. And just start thanking God for the presence of God touching James. Because there's, wow. Okay, Father, in Jesus' name, James, we forgive you in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, your glory. Your glory right now. Touch these James, Lord. There's such, such a prophetic utterance going forth tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, just touch in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yes, Father, I see something in the name of Jesus. Young, you're a soul winner. You are an evangelist in the name of Jesus. Flow in that anointing. Win the lost, win the lost in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In a double portion of God's glory. Yes, and the Lord's healing your soul right now. The Lord's healing your soul right now. Healing your soul right now with His God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God's winning every battle right now. God is winning every battle right now. God is winning every battle right now. God, help her up. God is winning every battle. Everybody say, God is winning. God is winning. God is winning. God's healing relationships. Some of you are going to, you need it. You're going to be getting calls and somebody's, I'm, I'm back. Mama, I'm coming home. Forgive me. You're going to be getting calls. Forgive me. Apologies. Apologies. God is winning. Say it again. God is winning. God is winning. The Lord's got me just, I'm walking by faith. God is winning. God is winning. Everybody say, God wins. God wins. God wins. What's your full name? Rachel Lahan. Rachel Lahan. What's your middle name? Oh, Leanne. Okay, so start over. What's your full name? Rachel Leanne Lahan. Everybody say, God wins. God wins. What's your Barbara Sue Wright. What's your full name? Joy K. Dalton. What's your full name? K. Ellen Howell. Oh, thank you. Who knows Goodwin or Goblin? Who is it? My cousin Michael Goodwin. 
I knew I was feeling something in the spirit because I kept saying, God wins, God wins, good win, God wins. Oh, glory. Lift your hands. Wow. There's going to be such glory come to your cousins. Do you know that you've got a prophetic anointing on you? You're going to prophesy to them. And they're going to come out of dungeons of darkness and everything. Because you're a man of God and you're going to be the Joshua to lead them out of the bondage. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for that glorious anointing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Power of God. The power of God. The power of God. Who's been praying? I don't know. I'm going to throw, I, I throw things out there. But there's a little shift now happening right now, okay? Who's been praying? Has anybody ever asked God? This is what the Holy Spirit just told me. See, he knows everything. I don't know. I just put it out there. But when I was walking back and forth and hearing God wins and good wins, you just got to stay with it in the prophetic. Don't get embarrassed. Don't get frustrated. Just... But I, 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 I saw a shift happening. And has anybody been praying just for, this may sound crazy, but it's almost like a Beverly Hillbillies thing. Has anybody been praying for oil to be found on your property? Huh? Wave to me if you have. Yeah. No, but the Holy Spirit just said, there's oil here. There's oil here. And it's going to be found here. See, I'm just radical enough to believe God right now. You could have a backyard, half an acre, and there could be nothing in it. But God right now, just God reveals it, can put oil in that ground right now. Glory be to God. Father, I'm just thanking you for oil right now. Oil. Just thanking you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who's been having a boat done, but I've just, I kind of feel kind of crazy here in the Holy Ghost. Who's been having issues with the bank? Any issue? Bank's been on you or <laughs> just issues that need to be straightened out? Boy, if I, if I had an issue with the bank and there's a prophet called that out, I'd be right there. I'd be right there. I would be there so quick because, man, a breakthrough is about to happen. A breakthrough. Do you know that I was in, uh, Pam and I were in Fort Worth ministering last week. And, and, uh, and Pam, you were, you were there. Yeah, you were there with me, right, hon? But we just get in that realm just like here right now, and all, we just begin to call things out in the Spirit. And all of a sudden, I looked at the pastor, and I, his name is Brent, and I said, Brent, I said, the Holy Spirit just tells me that he's going to do a miracle for this church through State Farm. Well, that's insurance, right? Brent just did. And then after service, at the end of the service, he said, I said, Brent, did that make sense? He said, oh, my Lord. He said, I'm meeting State Farm this week because it's something about the land that he bought and the lady he bought it from. And he said, I'm asking them to, to something about a, forgive a $100,000 debt. That's pretty phenomenal. So, it's going to begin this week. A financial balance in the books. 
That's what God's saying. That's what God is saying. I'm balancing the books now. I'm balancing the books. I'm balancing your assets. I'm balancing the value. <laughs> if you want in on this financial miracle, get up here right now. Get up here right now. God's going to do a miracle in this church, in this church financially. Listen, everybody. I'm telling you, the law of God, you can't mock it. You can't mock it. When you give, you're going to be blessed. Everybody, in the name of Jesus, listen to me. I'm not scolding you or anything. I'm building your faith. God said to bring all the tithe in the storehouse of God. If you want your home blessed financially, the starting point, not the ending point, the starting point is to become a faithful tither. I thought I'd hear a little more response than that. I thought I'd get a lot of response. Here's what I've learned many years ago. An old lady looked at me and said in California, and her and her husband were multi-millionaires. She said this. She said, I've learned. <laughs> she said, when God gets your wallet, Remember that, huh? He's got your heart. That was Shirley Arnold that said that. There's some of the richest people I've ever met. They never flaunted it. You never knew it. They served in our church that Pam and I pastored, built in California, served faithfully. Everybody in this place Make a covenant with God that you're going to tithe. And you don't tithe out of the net. You tithe out of the gross. You're going to tithe. And you're going to tithe to this local church. This is your church. Watch the miracles that God will do for you. And he's going to start it tonight. It's going to start tonight. But there's always a condition. You've got to do something. You've got to make a covenant with God too. Does that make sense? Please, don't stand up here and mock God. Don't stand up here and just... <laughs> no, you got to do that. Pam and I tithe. We give hilariously. Thank you, Lord. The Lord's doing a miracle. This is kind of weird. But there's going to be a miracle happen for this ministry. And it's going to be connected with the bank. And it's kind of weird because the bank is almost like a religious bank. It's almost like a religious bank. And I've never said that before and I've never heard that before. But I'm seeing little bits of letters. And it seems like it's almost like a religious ownership. But God said, I'm bringing new prosperity into this church. And you won't owe that bank a dime. Now, does this make sense to anybody, what I've just spoke? It does, Melissa? What, what sense does it make? I just saw Catholic. I just saw Catholic. Catholic, almost like a Catholic bank. JB Plummer owns my bank and I go there and he won't let hire anybody and he fires them if they swear. Wow. And he's, he's very he's a billionaire. Lift your hands. Get get ready. Now I want you to be in the praying the spirit. And while you're praying in the spirit, just see every bill. Just see your your finances flourishing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release them. We release the glory of God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, remove the obstacles. That's what he's doing right now. There's three obstacles that the Lord's taking care of. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're, lady, you're a soul winner. You're a soul winner. God's opening up the door to minister, to win influential people to God. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Release the financial glory upon your people right now. Tithers and givers, rise up. Release the financial glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for millions and millions and billions of dollars coming into your kingdom. Release the financial glory. Guys, I need you with me here. In the name of Jesus Christ, release the financial glory. Lord, oh, God. Lord, do the miracles. Teach them how to balance. Teach them how to manage, Father. Teach them how to entrepreneurship. Teach them how to make money, God, for the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, release the glory of God right now. Keep thinking big. You've got a lot of bread on the water. Get a lot of bread on the water. That's all right. It's coming back to you. In the name of Jesus, release the glory over their finances. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you want to get in here, I'm not going to. You just press your way through. That's it. If you want a financial anointing upon your life, get your hands up and just receive it right now all over this building. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, just... Release it, Lord. Lord, and teach her, show her new things. And Lord, just sharpen her skill set. And Lord, just in the name of Jesus, just let her uh, not to have too many plates on the table at one time. In the name of Jesus. Lord, for both, and we give, let's pray for Pastor Greg and Pastor Melissa right now. And let me prophesy over them right now. Now, now you kids have got so much on your table right now. Spirit of the Lord, just listen to me. You got so much on your table right now that, that, that <laughs> you need to take time for one another. Learn from your parents. Listen to them. Because the thing that was meant to bless you can actually curse you and you don't want that and so the Lord says take time take time to rebuild renew reconstruct and Greg I tell you right now in the spirit of God says I have your son I have taken him he is with me and you must go on you must go on in the name of Jesus so you're healed but now you're made whole and it's all right God says it's all right. Don't, don't, don't reject happiness now. Don't reject it. You went through the valley of the shadow of death. But the crying is over now. Don't reject the happiness. Don't reject it. That's the last part of the healing that will make you whole. Don't reject it, Greg. Because the church needs you. They need you. And the world needs you. The church, these sheep, these precious people need you. It's all right now. David prayed for his, uh, the joy of his salvation to be restored. Tonight, God restores it to you. Put a period there and walk on now the name of Jesus and you will come and go come and go come and go and you will raise up strong leadership in this church receive it right now father bless their finances bless their children supernaturally because Lord when the priest of the temple is best blessed the whole congregation is blessed bless them Bless their marriage like you have blessed Pam and I. Bless their friendship. Bless because when the priest of the temple is blessed, the whole congregation is blessed. Father, we thank you for wholeness now. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
The Spirit of the Lord says, don't doubt what I told you now. Don't doubt it. There's a big brick building that the Lord says I told you about. And it's more than a school. God says there's medicine. There's medical facilities there. And don't doubt that. Don't doubt that. But the Spirit of the Lord says, I've held things back because I want to work more on you. And I've got to work more on you too. Because I don't want to give you everything. Because if it comes at once, it will overwhelm you. And you'll forget who you are. Jesus. And God can bring the rest of the vision to pass. I just feel like lifting my hands and just worshiping God for what He's doing in our lives right now because He's doing such a beautiful work in us all. I feel it working in me. I feel Him working in me. I feel Him working in my kids tonight. I feel Him. I see Him working in my son, in my daughters. Oh, just taste and see that the Lord is so good, that the Lord is so good. Lord, I thank you for filling every seat here. Thank you for filling every seat. Oh, God, there's... Oh, God said invite 10 people to next Sunday's service. If you'll, I'll save them. I'll heal them. You're going to see a new anointing on your pastors. You're going to see a new anointing on your leaders. That's, don't you dare. You better accept what I prophesied to you tonight. Because I know it was God. Everybody invite 10 people. There's a new song coming in this place. There's a new song coming in here. Oh, glory be to God. Every marriage is blessed, right? Every marriage is blessed. Every home is blessed. Oh, glory be to God. Shut up, my mom. Glory be to God. Pastor Greg is going to come and receive a love offering for our ministry. I'm asking you to sow a hilarious seed tonight because God wants to do something prophetically great for you. Thank you so much. Man of God, we so appreciate the ministry, what God is doing. You know, there was a woman in great need that we find in 2 Kings chapter 4. And um, this woman was crying because her husband had passed away and that he was a, a good man. And the creditors were coming to take away her sons. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And when we're in those places of crying out to God, or we're in the places of loss, if we're in the place of the creditors that's coming, and they said that the creditors were coming, the pressure of the creditors coming, and when we're under the pressure so often, we don't see anything that we have as something that's going to be able to let us get out from underneath the creditors. And isn't it something that the question that he asked is, what is in your house? And that's the very thing that she was probably going to lose. That was the very thing that she had nothing to sustain. There was no future for her. And he doesn't say, what is it that you don't have? What is in your house? And there's always something that we have that we overlook under pressure, under pain. And I'm just going to tell you, not because of what someone else has told me, but from what I experienced myself. We were in... Cottonwood Mall, and uh, I preached about it for a while. Melissa said, quit talking about it. This was a long time ago. I haven't talked much about it. It was during those years where the stock market was going and exploding, and uh, we were in the ministry, 
So we understood the revelation of silver and gold have I none, but what we have, <laughs> we didn't realize we could have been on uh, stamps and <laughs> we, we qualified for it all. We just didn't know we qualified for it all. And, and did something incredible. So we, we went and got a loan to pay off our debt because our, our debt was growing faster than what we made. And uh, we had the incredible idea to invest that instead of paying on the debt in the stock market. Doesn't that sound like wisdom? And lo and behold, uh, this was in the year when 9-11 uh, happened. And uh, <laughs> I went from being in so much debt to be it's just terrible. And there was only 1700 and some change left in my account. And in my mind, in my soul, I thought I can turn that seventeen hundred around, and I'll and I'll invest it and do some day trading because that goes so well, right? In my mind, I'm sitting here thinking the seventeen hundred I'll be able to dig out of of the debt that we're in, and we're sitting in the service, and Prophet Lloyd begin to minister, and as he's ministering on the giving, all of a sudden I could hear, you know, I tried the binding, the loosing, and you can't cast out God, and and to give the rest of that I had in that stock account. And I'm like, God, but that's all the tug of war going on. And I remember getting out and writing the check. And I had tears, not tears of joy, tears, hot tears that begin to stream down my cheek. And because obviously, over $1,700 was a lot of money to me still today. And even more so back then. But more than the money amount, it was in my soul. I thought that's what was going to get me out of my debt. At this time, we had sold our place and uh, moved in with Pastors Happ and Sandy. We were the revolving door children that came back. Except we had more children when we came back. Nothing makes you feel more like a man when you go back to your wife's parents' house and move in with your kids. Can I tell you how great of a place I was in? That was my first midlife crisis, I think. <laughs> 20 years ago, no. All right, but, but once I gave that in a matter of weeks, now Pastor Dave can testify I'm not a handyman. But we had we'd made a bid on a house that was ridiculous. I didn't care if they said no. Um, and they did. They said no. The following week after I gave that, they called back and said, if you still want it, we will. And it, it was such a low amount, we were able to move out of where we were into a nicer house than we were before. And a year's time, we flipped that house. And in such a short period of time, we ended up living next door to Pastors Happen Sandy. And all this happened, and I stood, and I looked at my house, and I knew I couldn't afford it. I knew it was something nicer than uh, I could have earned. But I knew it came down to one moment when God began to minister to me to give to a, a seed, to give to a prophet. And I said, yes. And I don't know what the Lord's um, asking of you here tonight, but I'm telling you, what the prophet said to Elisha, what do you have in your house? And so often you don't think what you have is enough or something, but God places, and he's not asking you to give something that you don't have. He just asks you to give what you give something that's in your house. And he places and he speaks to you. And that one possibly that you think might be the enemy, <laughs> go with that one. No, I'm joking, obviously. But, but I'm telling you what. Because she obeyed and, and gave, now, she gave in such a way, she went and borrowed some jars, right? But the, the oil that poured out from that sustained her. It was a supernatural flow of oil that was produced out of listening to the instruction of the prophet. Being in the uh, touched under that ministry created to where she was able to pay off her debt, sustain the economy and the culture. And something that her husband did not leave her, which was a future, allowed her to have a future. Is that beautiful? 
that a gift that you give can sustain something supernaturally beyond your ability of what you worked for, earned for, of a future. And Father, I just thank you as you're speaking to your people here tonight. What is in their house, Lord? What is it that you would have for them to give? I know from personal experience of the blessings. You don't give to get a miracle, but once you give, the miracle's so incredible. I live in a house that I could not afford, I could not earn, and it happened because of a seed, because of giving. Now, whatever that is right now, just begin to, whatever the, the check, you can give by credit card. Yeah. Um, you can make out checks to, to, to just to Gateway, and then we'll write, okay. Just make a check out to Gateway, and everything that comes in, and then someone's going to be given um, to Lloyd Buster's ministry. He hasn't, he's done nothing this weekend but minister to you. He hasn't really shared what God's doing through their ministry right now. But I got to tell you, it's amazing. It's so incredible what God is doing in their life and their ministry. And uh, talk about sowing seeds in an amazing good ground. I want to be able to send the prophet to the next city to see the miraculous happen. And then also for what they're going to do, it's a global work that they're a part of. They're actually a part of some things, and I, I don't have the permission to share. But it's so incredible. And um, I'm telling you what, I'm counting an honor. After a give, I've already had my heart spoken to that I'm going to be giving. I want to give to them on a monthly basis um, and so on to their ministry for that. But um, so, Father, we thank you for the blessing of the seed here this night. God, I just thank you for the, the oil of the future that flows out of the obedience of the rewards of giving to the prophet. And God, we just are so thankful for the opportunity. When the man and woman of God are here, we want to bless them in such a beautiful, incredible way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Ushers, if you will, will receive. I think it's precious. They brought gifts out there. There's CDs out there. You want to stop by out there at the table? And um, the glory is here. God, we thank you for a weekend of the release of the wave of the greater glory, Lord, that you are bringing through the gateway to greater glory, God. And we just thank you. We receive it for upon us and upon our children and upon our children's children. Lord, we just thank you for all that you are doing here, God. We thank you for the open heaven. We thank you that you are stirring your people to pray even more so, praying in the spirit, Lord, throughout this week. God, we thank you. Thank you for the divine encounters, the open heavens, and the ministry. Lord, we thank you for being able to be sensitive to you, your, your presence in our life, and your voice speaking to us, God. We thank you for the divine assignment that you've sent your prophet on here this weekend, and we receive it. Can everybody say yes and amen in Jesus' name? And thank